I'm Mohammed Salman Bashir, and uh, I'm, I'm representing the Communication Theory Lab uh, from you know King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. So welcome to all of you from sunny Saudi Arabia. And so uh, today I'll talk about two problems uh, that you know we worked on recently. We published results uh, in in Transcommunications uh, you know about a few months ago. The first one is the optimal placement of hovering UAV relays in optical wireless backhaul. Right. So the idea is that. You know, you have a bunch of relays that you know that you need in order to close the link from the transmitter side all the way to the to the receiver side, right? So for traditional systems, uh, FSO systems, the set of tunable parameters are you know typically the beam with the receiver field of field detector size, power split factors, right? But for uh, with aerial relays, uh, we get another degree of freedom, or you know, more than one degree of freedom in terms of you know the, the flexible location. So the idea is that you know these relays can be moved about, right? And so this gives us more flexibility in terms of maximizing system performance. So the goal of this project was that how do we choose distances, uh, the interlink, uh, these interrelay distances, uh, you know, C zero, C one, and C two for these three relays in order to minimize the end-to-end -end outage probability, right? So of course, I'm assuming that the, source, the distance between the source and the destination is fixed, and we have to figure out how to arrange these relays in order to maximize the system performance or minimize the outage probability in this case. Uh, so, uh, so in this case, I'm assuming that, you know, the channel, uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm assuming that the channel suffers only from the pointing error. Of course, in, in terrestrial communications, we do have issues with scintillation and turbulence, right? So, um, so this is a more general setting in the sense that these relays, even though I call them UAVs, they can even be satellites in space or they can be, uh, you know, high altitude platforms that lie in the, you know, they're placed in the stratosphere, right? So in that case, the pointing error assumption is sort of valid. Uh, so in, in, I'm assuming that the channel only suffers from pointing error in this scenario in order to, you know, uh, make some good approximation and simplify results. So the pointing error, as we all know, and you know, in FSO community, that is the the you know the, the issue is that you know of course the fading is caused by the fact that you know the beam is misaligned, right? So here I'm assuming that my beam width, which is a Gaussian beam, is theta, the half angular beam width, and the pointing error, you know, the, or the angular pointing error is phi in this case, right? And so, and I, I'm uh, denoting the pointing error standard deviation by this factor sigma or variance sigma squared, right? And for the simplest possible case, I'm assuming that the pointing error is distributed in a really, you know, uh, with a really distribution, right? So if we assume that, then the channel coefficient has this form, which is given by this equation, right? So phi is a constant, uh, and which is a normalization constant, h is, of course, the variable, and uh, b is, you know, the uh, this factor, right, where a is the radius of my, uh, or the, of my receiver telescope for one channel, right? And Z is the distance between any two relays, right? And so, of course, this is the uh, the integrator function. And so my function lies over this port, which is starts from zero and ends at B, right? Which is, so B is the largest value that my age can take. And so in this regard, uh, I, I, the expected value of my channel coefficient is given by this expression. This has been, you know, derived in detail in, in, the, in the original manuscript. For CSI-assisted relays, so I'm assuming here that these are amplifying forward relays. These are not, you know, the regenerative relays that people generally talk about. And the idea is that we use these AF relays in order to minimize the latency of my serial network, you know, uh, uh, serial, in, you know, relays in the backhaul, right? And so the, uh, the, the, the gain is set, you know, for CSI-assisted relays, the gain is set equal to the involved of my channel gain, right? And so this factor will come back to this. This will define one of my gain constraints in, in the following analysis. So the outage probability is defined by this factor. So the idea is that the SNR, you know, if it goes below a certain threshold, we run into outage. And so this is the final expression for my outage probability, the end-to-end -end outage probability, right? So uh, in this case, M is the total number of relays in my, in my uh, backhaul link. Right, and uh, and the, so the so gamma, uh, gamma th is the threshold, pt is the transmit power, right? Zi is the link distance for you know the ith relay, right? And and so uh, this vector ri square over theta square zi square is actually an exponential random variable uh, with this parameter, which is actually the ratio of my beam width, half angular beam width, uh, to two times the pointing error, you know, variance, right? So, so this, you know, so in order to compute this in closed form, this is sort of difficult to do that, right? Because it's an involved expression. So we come up with an upper bound, which is an algebraic upper bound. So the idea, so in this case, uh, 
this quantity gamma t h prime actually contains my distances, these link distances that I want to optimize my function on, my function being the outage probability, right? So in this case, I'm trying to, I will try to minimize the upper bound on the outage probability as a function of these link distances, right? So here we can see that, you know, in order to minimize the upper bound, I need to maximize my gamma th prime, right? In order to maximize my gamma th prime, so this can be shown easily, right? So in order to maximize my gamma th prime, I need to minimize this factor that contains these link distances, right? And so, uh, so in, before I move on to my, you know, results, I show you uh, this curve where I'm showing the fact that the, you know, this is the, uh, the red curve shows you the true average probability and the blue one is the upper bound. And these are shown for two different, you know, uh, you know, scenarios where one is corresponds to three relays and this is, this corresponds to four relays, right? So, so in this case, I'll try to minimize my upper bound, right? In order to do that, I need to minimize this quantity that's shown in green, right? So this is my first optimization problem without the gain constraint. So here I'm assuming that my gains have, uh, my relays have infinite gain, right? So uh, these are the constraints. Of course, the total link distance has to be equal to D, right? And all these distances will be uh, will be positive, strictly positive, or you know, at least greater than zero. So uh, in this case, I define the Lagrangian function, which looks like this, right? So, and then uh, the solution is, you know, given by these by this expression, right? So here I'm seeing that the you know this relationship between any two consecutive you know distances, right? So we see that these distances, they are increasing monotonically, right? As a function of the pointing error variance squared to my beam where, you know, angular beam with squared, right? And so this is the general expression. And so this quantity, the ratio of my pointing error variance to my beam width determines the, the these locations, you know, Z0, uh, Z0 uh, star and Z1 star and ZM minus one star, right? So here in this case for, you know, for these values of my beam width and my, standard deviation, pointing at a standard deviation, I see that this increasing sequence in terms of my link distances. So in order to minimize the upper bound in the average probability, I need to arrange my relays in this fashion. And so uh, this is one arrangement that minimizes the upper bound. Next, we'll look at the optimization with the, uh, you know, with the finite gain constraint. And so in this case, uh, this is again my, the same function, the objective function is the same, right? But I introduced this extra you know, constraint, which is driven by the, the limit on my gain on for the EF relay, right? So, uh, so in this case, uh, we can see that when the constraint is active, there's only one point that satisfy the, the, you know, this, this boundary condition, right? So here I'm, you know, assuming that this is a, you know, of course this is a convex function, right? And so uh, when the constraint is active, the, the solution will lie on the boundary of the constraint. So this is one, you know, condition that satisfy this, you know, this uh, boundary constraint problem, right? And so we, I know that all these link distances all the way from zero to M minus two will be equal to each other, right? And the final one, of course, is actually the difference, you know, of the sum from the total link distance. So when I solve my problem, I get, you know, this is my solution, right? So this is constrained by my gain. Uh, when, of course, the gain constraint is active and this is the, you know, the final, the, the last link distance. So in, the, in this case, we see that we have a non-decreasing sequence instead of, you know, a strictly increasing sequence of, you know, these distances, right? And so here on top, I see, you know, the, these, you know, the arrangement when there's no gain constraint and at the bottom, I have this arrangement of relays when uh, I have a gain constraint, right? So here, uh, the, you know, I can summarize in, in, in a physical sense, what's happening is that, you know, as you, as the, as the, as the, as the as, you know, the pointing error increases, all, all these relays will sort of cluster around the transmitter side, right? The issue is that these are amplified forward relays. And, and so they actually accumulate error, uh, you know, as you move from one relay or UAV to the next, right? So in order to, you know, minim maximize the outage pro uh, minimize the outage probability, you need to place these relays closer to the transmitter side uh, in, order to, in order to maximize the performance as your channel becomes worse. And so these are some curves, right? So in this case, you know, the solid lines show us, so this is again, the true average probability not the upper bound. The solid lines show us the scenario when we place the relays in an equidistant fashion, right? We are uniformly distributed. And the dashed lines show us the, you know, the performance, uh, 
when we the, the performance we obtain when we actually you know optimize these really locations. So here actually in this case I'm optimizing over uh, my outage, you know, the upper bound, right? And then the link, link distances that are obtained by optimizing the upper bound, I play, I put, I plug them into my outage property expression. So in this case, we see that even though we are actually minimizing the upper bound, we also end up increasing the true outage, uh, minimizing the true outage probability in this scenario, right? So this is as a function of uh, my beam width theta and this curve, these curves correspond to my outage probability as a function of my, uh, my uh, amplifier gains, right? So and then I move on to the next part. So I'm not sure how much time I'm left but I'll try to finish this as quickly as possible. So in, in the second part, I'm, you know, I'm considering the, the slip problem, which is the simultaneous slide wave information and power transfer. So we have these laser powered hovering UAV relays that we introduce into the channel. And so here, you know, there's you know, at least one entity called Powerlight Technologies that's actually building these you know, power, uh, uh, laser power transmission systems. And of course, these are very high levels of power, 400 watts, 1,000 watts, but of, I'm sure that these experiments were done in a very controlled environment. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that these, this is, of course, not science fiction. These systems are being developed and prototyped, uh, you know, as of, you know, uh, recent past, right? So here, this is the problem uh, scenario. Here, I'm, you know, uh, of course, this is my UAV, right? And I'm trying to reach this receiver. Of course, I'm shadowed by this building, right? So I need to introduce this relay in between. And so this is, uh, a, you know, a laser-powered UAV that gets this power as well as data from this source, which is my tethered UAV, right? And I've, so in this case, channel zero is the source relay channel and channel one is the relay destination channel, right? And of course, the total length distance is D and C is the length, you know, for my source relay channel uh, and D minus C, of course, the length of relay destination channel. And so, of course, again, here, I'm just to simplify the analysis and keep things simple. I'm assuming that the channel mainly suffers from the pointing error. And so here, you know, theta is again the angular beam width, sigma square is the angular pointing error variance. So these are my functions for, you know, the uh, the probability density functions for my uh, for my channel that suffers from the pointing error. And these are similar. And so here, uh, of course, they can have, but I, um, you know, in order to keep things more general, you know, of course, they will have different beam widths and different, you know, pointing error uh, uh, pointing error variance, right? So. And so here we note that you know for these channels uh, the larger uh, gamma zero is right. So gamma z one and gamma zero are actually the, the ratios of the beam width, uh, so squared beam width to the pointing error variance, right? So uh, of course we see that when they sort of you know greater than much greater than one, uh, we can approximate a zero with b zero, which is the largest value a zero will take, and and the same goes for gamma one, right? So in this case the problem is. So I'm just supposing the simplest possible form of the problem here. We have the energy that comes in and get, it can, you know, the part of the energy delta, which is a fraction from zero to one, between zero and one, right? It, you know, it's diverted to the decoder block and the rest gets through to the transmitter block. Again, here I'm assuming that the rotor is being powered by the, by the, by the sun, for example, or it has its own source, right? So this is the simplest possible problem. And of course, in the detailed manuscript, we have it considered the, allocation of power to the rotor as well. So uh, here it's easy to see the optimization problem if delta is large, right? You do well in the source delay channel, you have all the power for the decoder, but you have no power for, or very small amount of power left for transmission, right? So your, in this case, your relay destination channel will suffer a lot, right? And conversely, if delta is very small, then of course you have all the power in the transmit block. So your relay destination channel will improve, but your source relay channel will suffer, right? So we have to find an optimal value of delta that will enhance the system performance. So these are the uh, you know, expressions. This is my expression for channel capacity for the end-to-end -end link. And this is my channel capacity in the, so in the source relay link. And this is my channel capacity for the relay destination link. And so in this case, the average end-to-end uh, you know, -end capacity is, of course, we have to average over H1 and H0, right? So we, uh, uh, we do the compute this integral, right? So I will rush through the next you know, few slides. Here, what I'm trying to do is, so in this case, if we want to optimize this as a function of delta, right? We'll have to solve this two-dimensional integral, which is sort of complex, right? Uh, so 
we uh, the goal was one of the goals was to figure out a way to simplify this expression with a you know a closed form expression so that we can numerically optimize the closed form expression with respect to delta right so in this case we get you know a, apply a number of approximations where we get rid of the min function and then in the second case we uh, we get rid of the log function using this you know approximation right and then uh, and finally in this so when you apply the log approximation this is sort of your approximate general capacity expression where of course uh, this cannot be again computed in, computed in closed form or evaluated in closed form, right? So we have to apply the binomial approximation further to to to, uh, to get rid of this expression, right? And then and the third approximation is that you set your ch channel one, um, you know, your relation destination channel uh, uh, to this to this uh, value, right? It's approximate a zero with b zero. So I, I'm rushing through this, right? So however, in the end. Um, you get this proximate result, right, which is in closed form, and this can be computed uh, using, you know, uh, in, you know, simple integration rules, right? So I didn't bother to put the the final expression here, but this can be, of course, computed very easily. Uh, so this is, you know, my uh, the normalized mean square error for my, you know, true channel capacity and the approximate one, and so we see that, you know, as your ratio improves, your beam width square. Uh, to the pointing error variance squared in channel zero as it improves, your normalized mean square also improves, you know, with that, right? So as as you get bigger here, you know, your normalized mean square error becomes smaller. Mohamed, and, so, sorry to interrupt, but you have three sorry. you have three minutes left for your presentation. Okay, I'll just finish within three minutes. Sure. Okay. So this is sort of you know I think the last yeah the last you know so the third last slide. So hey, we can approximate you know if we can do uh, close if you want to. We want a closed form expression for optimization problem. We can do that uh, through approximations, right? So the approximation that apply here is that the beam width is much larger than the pointing error, right? So when you have that, you have a closed form expression for your uh, for your uh, power split factor, right? Which is you know b one over one plus b one, right? And so in this case, uh, again, we can compute this uh, this normalized mean square error, right? For the for the delta that you compute using through using numerical optimization versus the delta tilde that you compute using this simple expression, right? Again, a gamma one being the ratio of you know my beam width to the pointing error variance as it improves, right? The normalized mean square error also improves, uh, and so typically, I mean, free space optics. This is one, you know, this is these are this is one set of values that we use in in most receivers. Of course, we have we can optimize our beam width, you know, for a given value of uh, on the pointing error variance, right? And so the, I'll end my slide, my presentation with this final slide. So here, you know, this is the channel capacity and we optimize it with respect to delta, right? For two different scenarios. And we can of, of course see that, you know, the capacity gets maximized as certain values of delta. And this is the, the you know, the optimal value of delta where your capacity is maximized. And at this point, I'll end my presentation. Thank you very much for your time.